Sometimes the stories in the Bible are about larger than life characters making heroic, momentous, miraculous uh, decisions. And sometimes the stories about, are about everyday people making difficult, everyday kinds of decisions. The latter kind of story is what our Old Testament reading is like this morning. Naomi is nobody famous, just a woman who fell in love with somebody from another country, married him and moved to his home. They have children together, two boys. But then tragedy enters into their family story. Her husband dies, then one of her sons, and then the other. And a widow in those days of crushing patriarchy without sons was doomed. She had no means of supporting herself. She seemingly had no future. All she had left were her two daughters-in-law. Out of loving concern for them, she tells them to go away, leave, find other husbands, find another way of supporting themselves in these difficult days. One of them obeys her, but Ruth, Ruth, her other daughter, makes another choice. Do you hear what's happening in this story? Do you understand the choice that Ruth makes here? It's a choice made not out of safety, but a choice made out of loyalty with her mother-in-law, to be in solidarity with her suffering with her vulnerability, with her uncertain future. It's a choice made out of love. Ruth stayed with Naomi out of love. The Apostle Paul tells us about many aspects to love. This story tells us about one I want us to think about this morning, loyalty, the loyalty of love. Ruth travels with Naomi back to her hometown in Bethlehem. Its story should make you think about two other travelers to Bethlehem. And because Ruth and Naomi are so smart, so hardworking, so strong, such wonderful women, they make a future together. And at the very end of the book of Ruth, this book about these ordinary women showing extraordinary courage and loyalty, we find out something incredible. Ruth was the great-grandmother of David, David, the king of Israel. In this way, we find out that Ruth's choice, this ordinary woman, this choice out of the loyalty of love, doesn't just change Naomi's history, it changes the history of an entire nation. An old woman named Mrs. McNeil walked miles and miles through the farmland of Ontario in the early 1900s. She was bringing Bibles and pamphlets and the, and the gospel to the families in the open country out there. An 11-year-old girl named Ethel Nelson was so touched by Mrs. McNeil's loving words that she followed her to a revival meeting. There, her life was changed. She wanted to follow Jesus Christ the rest of her life after that meeting. Ethel br began bringing her family to church, just like some of our kids bring families to church on Sunday mornings. And after she graduated high school, she went to work at a Salvation Army mission in Toronto. Two important things happened there. She, she fell in love and she felt a strong calling to overseas Christian mission. The man that Ethel fell in love with didn't really understand about her faith and wasn't at all supportive of her calling. He wanted a conventional wife. He wanted a predictable life. So she left him. And she went to work at an orphanage in Turkey, of all places. Before she left, she and every young woman going on that mission were forced to make one promise while they were there they would not fall in love with the natives. When Ethel arrived in Turkey, she had a language teacher there named Yuvan, a young Greek man. Guess what happened? She fell in love with one of the natives. And he loved her too. Yuvan was encouraged by the Congregationalist missionaries there to go to the United States. Off he went to Oberlin College in Ohio to be a minister. Ethel remained behind until people found the letters that she and Yuvan had written one another and discovered 
her secret. She had fallen in love with a native man. So she was sent home in disgrace. But instead of returning to Canada, she went to Oberlin, Ohio, and there she and Yuvon were married. After he was ordained, the two of them would serve as home missionaries in Racine, welcoming and looking after Eastern European workers being brought in to work in the factories of southeastern Wisconsin. You've guessed who Ethel Nelson was, my grandmother. And the loyalty of love that she showed to God and the loyalty of love that she and my grandfather showed to each other changed everything for my family. What about you? How did your grandparents meet? Where in your family history has everything changed because of the loyalty of love? I'd like to invite you to turn to somebody that you didn't come with this morning and take a couple of moments to talk about the loyalty of love in your own family history. Go ahead. I'm going to invite you to take a few moments to wrap up these conversations and I'm, you're going to have another chance to talk to one another in a moment. I, I hope you've heard a little bit from one another how the loyalty of love changed your own family. In fact, love can change everything. That's the way love is. Marianne Bird grew up knowing that she was different and she hated it. She was born with a cleft palate and her schoolmates would tease her about her misshapen lip, her crooked nose, her lopsided teeth, her garbled speech. When her schoolmates asked her, what happened to your lip? She would tell them that she had fallen and cut it on a piece of glass. Somehow it seemed more acceptable, she thought, to have suffered an accident than having been born different. Marianne was convinced that no one outside her family would ever love her. Marianne Bird wrote about an experience she had in the second grade. She had a teacher, Mrs. Leonard, that everyone adored. She was short, round, and happy. A sparkling lady. Every year in school, they'd have a hearing test. You remember having those hearing tests when you were a kid? Because of how she was born, Marianne was virtually deaf in one of her ears, but year by year when she'd have that hearing test, she would cheat when they said, cover your good ear, she'd just pretend to. And that way she foiled the hearing test every year. That year, Mrs. Leonard gave the test to all of the kids, and Mary Ann Bird was the last to be administered the test. She knew how it went from her experience in the past. She'd stand against the door, cover one ear, and the teacher sitting at her desk would whisper something that she had to repeat back. The teacher would say something like, the sky is blue, or do you have new shoes? <laughs> and the student would have to say it back. Marianne stood there waiting, pretending to cover a good ear and waiting until she heard Mrs. Leonard whisper seven words, seven words that God must have put in her mouth, seven words that would change Marianne's life. Mrs. Leonard whispered to Marianne, I wish you were my little girl. And that changed everything for her. She writes that she stopped thinking about herself as a damaged person. She stopped being ashamed and feeling second rate. Instead, she started thinking of herself as someone worth loving. The loyalty of love that Mrs. Leonard showed her student, Mary Ann Bird, stayed with Mary Ann her whole life long. So what about you? When, ha when has somebody shown you the loyalty of love? When has God's love entered your heart through somebody else and let you know that you were a beloved child of God? Who was the person that God used to transmit that message? Again, let's take a moment to talk to one another about this. Again, thank you for those conversations and for taking time to share with one another. Here's my favorite Martin Luther quote. Faith, like light, should ever be simple and unbending, while love, like warmth, 
should beam forth on every side and bend to every necessity. Faith, like light, should be simple and unbending, while love, like warmth, should beam forth on every side and bend to every necessity. In 1981, when President Reagan chose then-Judge Sandra Day O'Connor to be the first woman to serve on the Supreme Court, a reporter from the Ladies' Home Journal asked her husband, John, how he felt about playing a supporting role to his more famous wife. This is how he responded. Sandra's accomplishments don't make me a lesser man, they make me a fuller man. Justice O'Connor retired in 2006 from the Supreme Court when the symptoms of her husband John's Alzheimer's disease accelerated. A year later in 2007, a year of her caring for him, she let it be known that her husband, while in a health care facility in Arizona, had developed a romance with a fellow patient. Justice O'Connor and her husband showed a loyalty of love that humbles me. Over the long journey of their marriage, their love wasn't confined to rigid roles designated by male and female. Their love bent to the necessities of change. In fact, because of John's illness and the nature of it, the loyalty of their love wasn't even confined by a traditional understanding of fidelity. But you and I would firmly agree that there was something wonderfully, marvelously loving about their marriage and about them. Faith, like light, should be simple and unbending, while love, like warmth, should beam forth on every side and bend to every necessity. Through every changing circumstance, through every new necessity, the loyalty of love is the way that guides us through. Through age and infirmity, through changing times and rising tides, through every crisis, through every fresh challenge, love like warmth beams forth on every side and bends to every necessity. Praise God for Ruth, for Naomi, for Mrs. McNeil and Ethel Nelson, for Sandra Day and John O'Connor, for all of those whom we have mentioned this morning who have shown us and our world the loyalty of love. Amen.